Hello, everybody. Just a quick couple of words of background on an area known as injunctions. Um, the first week when I said that uh, most civil litigation is really about uh, attempting to recover money, um, it seems a little cynical, but true. But there is an aspect of uh, civil litigation where people are not necessarily seeking money, and it will be something that you'll run into sometimes. I noticed that uh, in some of your comments about what you wanted to do with your careers, there was uh, some interest in uh, public interest uh, law or interest with uh, uh, nonprofits um, to help people with certain problems. A lot of times in those types of cases, you'll be seeking help from a court and it won't necessarily be money, but it will often be called injunctions or in law, they'll call it relief, injunctive relief. And injunctions are kind of simple in some ways. They are an order from a court that tells somebody to either stop doing something or to do something. Um, so it orders action, either stop doing it or do something. Injunctions are supposed to be difficult to get. Um, they're difficult to get because one of the rules that you need to meet is you need to show that you will suffer irreparable harm if you cannot get this injunction. By irreparable harm, it means that's a, an injury that you're really not going to be able to fix very well with money. Um, I've been involved in actually a lot of cases with uh, injunctive relief. The easiest ones, uh, one dealt with the what was going to be the destruction of a historic home, and um, the court agreed that uh, it would need to be stopped because if they knock down this historic home, um, be very difficult to come up with a remedy that would involve money that would ever fix a home that was entirely destroyed and gone and of historic value. Um, another had to do um, in matrimonial cases with uh, children, and that's oftentimes where one parent wants to remove a child, uh, say, from the country. Um, and in that instance, uh, the lack of companionship with the child was felt to be something that was would be irreparable harm. You wouldn't be able to compensate someone with money for that. So um, that's the general background with respect to injunctions. But um, specifically, uh, injunctions are often done on an emergency basis. And uh, I can tell you that um, if people do and people are involved in a legal practice that involves injunctions, it will often involve meeting with a client preparing paperwork as fast as you can, contacting the court, contacting your opponent, and rushing into the court to try and get an injunction. Uh, it will oftentimes require a first immediate hearing uh, for what is often known as a TRO. Maybe some of you have heard of TROs, Temporary Restraining Orders. TROs, so you know, are only good for 10 days. So what happens is if you get a temporary restraining order, what a judge will do is schedule another hearing within that 10 day period. At that 10 day period, you're going to not only have to show that there'll be irreparable harm, but at the hearing, you'll, the second hearing, you'll have to show that you have a strong likelihood of success at the end of the case. You'll have to show that you have a good case. If you are successful, you will get what's called a preliminary objection. That will follow the 10-day period that the temporary restraining order covers. Now you'll get a preliminary you'll get a preliminary injunction. The preliminary injunction will last until the case is decided by the court. So think about it, everybody. That could be could easily be a year, could be a year and a half. Uh, in some courts, could be longer than that. So getting that preliminary injunction can be a powerful uh, settlement device. In other words, when, when a, another party is looking at the case and you've got this injunction that's going to uh, require them to act a certain way for perhaps at least a year, maybe then it's easier to settle with them. Um, then what happens is once the case is finally decided, finished, complete, um, if you win your preliminary objection, will convert to something called a permanent injunction. 
Did I say objection again, everybody? I have objection on the mind. They are preliminary injunctions and it would uh, transfer to a permanent injunction. That permanent injunction will say forever. The other side cannot do this. Uh, injunctions are oftentimes issued over a law that is alleged to be unconstitutional. If there were a law passed that we felt in, infringed on our First Amendment right, um, we could urge that there be a temporary restraining order to stop it for 10 days. If we're successful there, we can ask for a preliminary injunction that would last for the duration of the lawsuit. And at the end of the case, if you were successful and the law was determined to be unconstitutional, there would be a permanent injunction issued and you could never enforce that law. So that's the way it would play out, everybody. Injunctions are kind of a cool area of the law in that they're often dramatic. Um, over the years, I uh, was involved in a case that uh, for about maybe nearly maybe nearly a year stopped transfers of uh, prisoners from one prison to another without uh, hearings and it involved a case where a person had a uh, an original uh, site where they were imprisoned that was pretty much like a you know a camp um, he uh, had some issue about discipline and was sent to a real prison. Give you an idea how real it was. It was built in the 1860s. So he contended that uh, this was a right that he had, should have had a hearing for this. Instead, he was just told, pack up your stuff. You're going to this new, this other prison, this old prison. Um, so we had a uh, case in federal court where we got an injunction and uh, stopped that for a long period of time. Um, in any event, everybody, that's the that's it for injunctions. Um, know the three stages of injunctions, temp TRO, preliminary injunction, and permanent injunction. If you are at all thinking about, hey, isn't that what a uh, domestic violence order is? Yes, that's an entire process that issues injunctions to protect people uh, that are subject to uh, uh, threats of violence or violence. And that's a, a system that uh, is functioning all the time. And uh, if you're in the uh, real world of litigation, you'll be involved in injunctions in some way or another. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody.